I want to welcome you back to our next set of videos. We want to be talking about the question, is the Book of Mormon, is it located in the Bible? I think it's a very important question for us to answer. Whenever I have had studies with my Latter-day Saint friends, they often bring up that the Book of Mormon can be traced in the Bible. And which one passage that they use is from the chapter 37 of Ezekiel. Now, when we study Ezekiel chapter 37, we have to realize when the Latter-day Saints, they say they trace the Book of Mormon in the Bible, this is how they would use these verses. And let me read these very carefully to you. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 15 through 17, which states, Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, As for you, son of man, take a stick for yourself and write on it, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write on it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. Then join them one to another, and for yourself into one stick, and they will become one in your hand. So what they would say is that, you see there was these two sticks in which Latter-day Saints believe that the word stick can be alluded to in a, in a scroll. So they would say since God's word was written on scrolls that these are referring to two revelations that God would give. And they would say the first stick for Judah, they would say since you know Jesus came from the line of Judah, this would represent the Bible. And then they would say that the stick of Ephraim, or the stick of Joseph, rather, would be the Book of Mormon because you read in 1st Nephi chapter 5 verse 14, And it came to pass that my father Lehi also found upon the plates of brass a genealogy of his fathers. Wherefore he knew that he was a descendant of Joseph. So you see there they would say since you know a line of prophets came through uh, Lehi, such as Nephi himself, then that's referring to the Book of Mormon. And so these two sticks would be joined together and may be made one. Now our Latter-day Saint friends failed to take into account Ezekiel 37 verses 18 through the rest of the chapter. Because if you were to read the rest of those verses, you would come to understand exactly what the picture of what Ezekiel is trying to teach the people of God. So let me read to you those further, those verses, and, see, and we'll get a, gain a better grasp of what Ezekiel is trying to say. And when the children of your people speak to you, saying, Will you not show us what you mean by these? And say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I'll take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his companions, and I will join them with it, with the stick of Judah, and will make them one stick, and they will be one in my hand. And the sticks on which you write will be in your hand before their eyes. Then say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Surely I will take the nations wherever they have gone, and will gather them from every side and bring them into their own land, and I'll make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king over them all. They shall no longer be two nations, nor shall they ever be divided into two kingdoms again. They shall not defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will deliver them from all their dwelling places in which they have sinned, and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people, and I will be, my, be their God. David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall all walk in my judgments and observe my statues and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob my servant, where your fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell there, they, their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will establish them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in their midst forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations also will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is in their midst forevermore. From what Ezekiel was trying to say, I think we gained a greater understanding of the context and what Ezekiel was trying to say to Israel. So we see there in that passage that we have the stick of Joseph or Ephraim, and then we have the stick of Judah. Now, what was he trying to show us? What is Ezekiel trying to say? He was trying to say this. You remember in First and Second Kings, what happened to the kingdom, the United Kingdom under Solomon, after he had died? What occurred? It split into two, didn't it? And then what we see is there was the Northern Kingdom, which was also known as Samaria, also known as Ephraim, and then we see the Southern Kingdom, which was known as Judah, which was known as Jerusalem. And so, it, you know, the, the, the northern kingdom contained the ten tribes, 
and the southern kingdom contained Judah and Benjamin. And so we see what Ezekiel is trying to say is, I want to take these two sticks, which represents the, the two nations, the two kingdoms that had been formed during that time after Solomon's death, and they're going to be reunited. Because once the people get back into the land, once again, the people will be one. And further, it shows a, I believe, a Christological interpretation. Because it says, David their king shall be king over them. No doubt, the descendant of David is referring to Jesus Christ. How he'd be king over the spiritual nation of Israel, his church. And so that's what Ezekiel 37 is trying to say to us. It's not referring to the Book of Mormon and the Bible being put together, but rather the two nations that were split apart, the two kingdoms, will be formed back into one in which there will be a spiritual kingdom that Jesus will reign over.